We've already established that the innate immune response is nonspecific. So what exactly do I mean when I say recognition of pathogens by the innate immune response? Well, as I've mentioned before, macrophages tend to be the first cells that encounter pathogens when there is a breach of host cell barriers. Macrophages are also the garbage trucks of the body, eating all sorts of dead and dying cells and anything else they encounter along the way. So how does a macrophage know when something it eats is okay and won't cause any issue for the host, and when something is definitely not okay and that it should mount a response against it, like this creepy looking guy over here? The answer lies in the differences between us and the things that attack us, namely bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. This is because all pathogens have some molecules crucial to their structural integrity that are not expressed by humans. These are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or microbial patterns, or PAMPs. Macrophages and other phagocytes, like eosinophils and neutrophils, have a number of receptors known as pathogen recognition receptors, or pattern recognition receptors. Remember, immunologists are kind of mean by trade, and we like to name everything twice to keep it confusing. These receptors are not specific for any single pathogen. Instead, they are specific for many pathogens that share specific components that are crucial to its structure and survival, or in some case for host proteins like components of complement and antibodies that are capable of binding the pathogen. The process of receptor-mediated phagocytosis of a pathogen is referred to as opsonization. So complement and antibodies are referred to as opsonins. Basically, they make it easier for the macrophage to grab onto the pathogen and eat it by making it look more attractive to the macrophage, much like buttering a slice of bread makes it look tastier. Some examples of PAMPs are things like flagella of parasites and motile bacteria, zymosan in the cell wall of fungi, single-stranded DNA or double-stranded RNA in viruses. Bacteria provide many of our PAMPs owing to their complex cell wall structures. Gram-positive bacteria have a thick peptidoglycan that has something called lipotoic acid. Lipotoic acid aids in its adherence to host cells while gram-negative bacteria has a relatively thin peptidoglycan, but it does have this coating, lipopolysaccharide, or LPS. LPS is extremely good at, mount, at causing a strong innate immune response. We call it immunogenic. It elicits a great response. And it's detected by many bac pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs, notably CD14, which is a marker on monocytes that is also obviously important in recognizing bacterial infections. So, for example, here is a table of pattern recognition receptors and their respective ligands, the PAMPs. This is quite the list, but the important things to note are that all the PAMPs are either structurally crucial to the pathogen or are part of the pathogen's genome. Second, it covers bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites, which are all classes of pathogens. You don't really need to know this table. Well, except for maybe this guy, CD14. As I mentioned, he's pretty important. Almost all of these have the ability to cause phagocytosis, and if you remember from the innate immunology video, phagocytosis is the first thing that needs to happen when a macrophage encounters a pathogen. But the second thing that needs to happen is cytokine production to elicit a good immune response. And really, there's only one class of receptors down here that leads to cytokine production. This is the most important class of PRRs, and you do need to know them. Lots of questions about PRRs. They require multiple steps. Okay, enough with the hints. Toll-like receptors are evolutionarily conserved all the way down to the fruit fly. There are 11 TLRs in the human body, but we only know the functions of TLRs 1 through 9, so for the moment you can kind of forget about 10 and 11. They are located both in the cellular membrane 
and in the endosomal membrane within the body, thus protecting us from both extracellular pathogens, like this large motile bacteria, and intracellular pathogens, like this virus. They exist in heterodimer or homodimer configurations. For example, TLR2 can form a heterodimer with TLR1 or 6, while all of the other TLRs are forming homodimers. TLR2, with either 1 or 6 as its binding partner, will recognize peptidoglycan of bacteria and zymosan of the cell wall of the fungi. TLRs 3, 7, and 8 will all recognize double-stranded RNA from viruses. TLR4 will recognize LPS on gram-negative bacteria, while TLR5 recognizes the flagella of motile bacteria. Lastly, TLR9 recognizes unmethylated CPG DNA. What does that mean, really? Just methylation of a particular portion of DNA? Well, actually, it's pretty important because both bacteria and viruses have it. And guess what? We don't. So in that way, your body can recognize it and mount a response against it. In this way, TLRs cover the full spectrum of pathogens that could invade us and signal to the cell to begin the inflammatory response. TLRs, while the most important, aren't the only game in town. They are also, there are also nod-like receptors and, as I'm showing here, rig-like receptors, which recognize pathogens within the cytoplasm of the cell. Rig-like receptors in particular recognize viral RNA of RNA viruses that replicated in the cytoplasm. This leads to production of a new set of cytokines that we haven't talked about yet, the type 1 interferons known as interferon alpha and interferon beta. These interferons do what their name implies. They literally interfere with the replication of viruses when they are produced. What's important to note here, though, is that all toll-like receptors and this rig-like receptor lead to downstream signaling that actually impacts the transcription of cytokines and inflammatory markers within the nucleus. And this can actually have long-term effects on how we fight the virus, like creating interferons, which will interfere with your replication. In summary, while the innate immune response is not specific, it has developed a way to recognize crucial components that are shared across many pathogens.